Time for a soccer down here, 2v1. And for this, we go to Des Moines, Iowa. Catch up with Des Moines United FC, one of the new members of the NPSL, hanging out with us, president and owner Darwin Salas, and the head coach, J.R. Fernandez. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us for a 2v1. Thank you so much. It's a, it's really a pleasure being on your show and uh, very excited, very excited to be part of uh, the NPSL. You know, one more step into the outdoor uh, arena. And this is what we'll get into here since... Uh, Darwin, you mentioned it first. I'll just go ahead. Normally what I do in a 2v1 situation is I'll do a coin toss and the winner of the coin toss gets to figure out if they get to answer first or defer. But since you went ahead and you you went ahead with the, the first thought, when it came to the NPSL and taking Des Moines United FC to this stage, what was the thought process like? Well, we're definitely looking, uh, always looking for opportunities to to be in a more competitive uh, league. Uh, Des Moines United, you know, it started, actually, it started on a futsal arena. Uh, there was a big migration of uh, Brazilian players recruited by universities here in the state of Iowa. And then it got to a point back in 2017 where all these uh, Brazilian players graduated and uh, wanted to continue playing. So we started it as a futsal project, won different tournaments, including uh, being finalists at a World Soul Futsal Tournament, uh, joined the MLF. Then we went into the outdoor arena. I, I don't think uh, we went to a different league, which I don't know if I could mention in here or not. Uh, the UPSL, we went into the UPSL, uh, we're champions our first year got into the top eight of the nation. Um, we're champions again of our region the second year. And uh, recently, uh, last uh, last year as well, we joined the M MASL, M3. We're champions in the MASL, and that gave us the, um, uh, the upper hand to become uh, uh, an M2 team. So now we're a, a professional M2 team under the branding of Iowa Des Moines Hawks, which is part of the family of Des Moines United. And we, we just simply thought, you know, going into the NPSL was the, the next right step when it comes to outdoor, you know. Coach, what has it been like to see everything grow the way that it has and uh, get to this point where you're now a part of all of these different things, but now you, the NPSL is now a part of the resume? What's this like for you? I, I think it's very excited. Uh, like Darren said, we started as a futsal group we we uh last year we played upsl but we know the npsl is a league they involve a lot of more um college and uh high quality uh, uh soccer so we uh, i'm personally excited for the 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 development you know with the keep some of these college players around for the summer uh kids that cannot go home if they are foreigners and you know, develop the players here around the community, and I think that NPSL is the right league for that. And you know, jump into a a more competitive league always bring more excitement. And so we're all looking forward for this, and we we're looking looking forward. Darwin, let me ask you this: when it comes to the Des Moines soccer footprint and what soccer means to Des Moines. How, for someone who's never been there and might know Des Moines, Iowa from, say, the Big Ten or something like that, you know, they only have that surface knowledge of the state of Iowa. How would you break down what soccer means and really what futsal and indoor soccer mean, considering what you guys do? How would you describe what soccer means? to Des Moines and the footprint that you and Coach Fernandez deal in? Well, I can tell you something. I migrated to Des Moines, Iowa uh, from California about 20 years ago. And it's a complete different story. You know, when I arrived here, it wasn't as diverse of a, of a place. Um, soccer used to be uh, an elite project, you know, an elite sport. You know, only certain people were able or had access to soccer, there were some clubs out there, uh, very competitive, but at the end of the day, it wasn't as big. In the last 10 years, it has grown exponentially. 
Uh, Des Moines, it's a, it's a market that it's growing very rapidly. The it's a very diversified market. A lot of communities, you know, Latino community, um, different, different, uh, just, just in Des Moines United, just to give you an example, we, uh, in our roster, we represent over 13 countries in, in, our, in our roster. Um, the more and more clubs have developed that give access to 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 the minorities or, the, or, or or to the diverse community like United Football Academy, Des Moines Soccer Club, clubs that are actually providing uh, more resources to our to the development. Uh, we obviously uh, Des Moines is the home of the Menace, which is the big national champion of the USL two. Uh, there's a big stadium being built. Uh, Des Moines is supposed to be a, a USL champion market uh, in 2025. And um, what we've been doing with Des Moines United, it's it's kind of add up to that. You know, now uh, we are considered the professional indoor team in the market, and and uh, and continue growing in the outdoor. So, if you going back to your question, I think it's extremely important more and more people is becoming one of the most important sports uh there's uh, plenty there's hundreds of uh of uh local teams that play every sunday different leagues you know the latino leagues the these leagues the, the you know uh kids female leagues uh it's really it's really growing and and the city has been adapting to that as well they're building more and more different complexes to, to account for that big demand in the soccer arena. So, Coach, let me ask you this. When it comes to that last five or ten years or so, from your perspective as being a coach, how would you gauge the level of talent and the level of intensity of everybody who's playing the sport now there in Des Moines? Yes, I can go back a little bit. When Darren mentioned he was uh, immigrated 20 years ago, I came here like 33 years ago. And when I first came, I was like, oh, my God, I came straight from Brazil and I was going to school and start coaching. And it was tough as heck because um, we had no soccer. Basically, soccer was a new game here in our community, in this state. Uh, not many people knew about futsal. Actually, I, I was the one who started futsal. And, and with our winter here being so hard, I was like, how come you guys don't play futsal? But anyway, um, in the past 10, five years, um, it grows so much. Um, we, like Darwin mentioned, we have the Des Moines Menace. Now we have our, our, uh, our professional indoor arena team. Uh, we have a new stadium built in. We have several. Uh, this is something great because we had really hard time to find good facilities, good fields to, to, to train, to you know, prepare teams. And, and now we have several facilities uh, in, in the, the central Iowa, the Moina area that uh, are being built with turf and, and indoor places that we can train because our, our winter is so long and so hard. Um, but the, the fact that we immigrate a lot of foreigners um, from all over the country, all over the world, uh, this helps to grow the, the sport as well. Um, we became a lot more competitive. We became, we exposure several clubs went to play on the National League. And, you know, and people like, wow, now Iowa has the name out there and the uh, in the country, you know, it became so exciting. I remember my son was was went to the final at the regional tournament, and I was like, "Whoa, this is growing!" So, so really excited, and and I believe it. Um, Ten years ago, if you asked me that, I was gonna say definitely not. But I believe it. We we grown to the point that um, I can say Kansas City is a big city for soccer right we we have the the sporting kc there we have a lot of soccer going on and we are following the, those steps and that's very exciting because uh, soccer is big time part of my life and a lot of people that i know and i and i live with it so um yeah now i can tell you watch out the moines coming 
come alive, folks. So, Darwin, let me ask you this. With the experience that you have when it comes to building franchises and making sure that, okay, we've got the indoor part right, we've got the futsal part right, we've got the the year-round operations part right, the runway might be a little easier for you to get this NPSL franchise off the ground But a lot of folks I know in the area, when they saw the announcement, I'm fairly certain they probably were sitting there going, oh, yeah, 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 Des Moines United. Yeah, May, June, yeah, everything will be fine. When you and I both know that that, that's a short runway. That's like May, June. Yeah, we got to get stuff squared away. When it comes to the build, is it any easier because of what you've built in the past? Or is it just as much a sprint as we figured? Well, I mean, it, it's definitely a challenge. The good thing is that over the years, since 2017, we've been developing uh, a team, you know, that's been playing together. And we've been uh, creating alliances, not only with the clubs, you know, uh, but with the universities. I mean, JR himself it's, uh, is, the, is the head coach for one of the colleges here in town. Marshalltown College. Um, there's great talents. I mean, you got Drake University, you got Iowa State, you got, uh, you know, um, Grandview. Grandview, you got, uh, all, you know, different, different colleges that are looking at, at Des Moines and they look at, at, at Des Moines United as an opportunity to be able to play at this level. You know, um, I have nothing but good things to say about the menace, but, uh, Part of what has been happening with the menace over the past years is that a lot of the players come from all over the nation as it's a very competitive team, which is expected from them, you know? So a lot of those opportunities for local players hadn't been there. And that's another reason why we decided to really pursue that. They can create the Moon United uh, to give opportunities to local talent. I mean, you have, it's incredible how much talent there is. Even people that don't even go to college that, that have great talent and great uh, potential. So if you ask me, yes, it's always a challenge to put a team together. We're in the middle of a season of our indoor professional, which by the way, we're first jet, first place in the nation in our, in our league at this point. We were able to create a, a very competitive team. And I guess, JR, you can give us a little update on, on how are the plans going for May? Are we going to be ready? Yeah, I... I agree with you, with you now. It's always a challenge. However, um, I know that last year being the first year of uh, UPSL as the coach, um, right. I had a lot more challenge than I'm going to have to build a team for this year. Number one, because we, we, we built a base, right? So we have a core of guys that really enjoy what we did together. Uh, they started style of uh, play um you know the 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 motivational part you know the friendships that that we have right now so uh it's something already strong there but with that a lot of other uh college universities associations uh saw what we did what we built and and was very positive so they already reach out to me and say, hey, we're going to have several players here that, that want to play for you guys this summer. How we can do this? When is tryouts? Uh, we have kids that are not going to go back to Japan or Brazil or France. Uh, so they, they want to stay here and keep playing. So when, you know, colleges start again, they'll be ready to go. So I already have my plate full as far as uh, what are going to do to all these players since we just care a, a bunch, right? I just can roster, have a number of players in my sessions, so it's not overwhelming. And I want to, of course, have the best. But for me, it's a good problem to have. When we have a lot of players that want to participate in our program, uh, want to play for the Des Moines United, and, and I know uh, they are good and quality players and will be competitive enough to looking forward to championship. 
All right, Darwin, as the build continues and folks want to keep an eye and maybe catch up with you and Coach Fernandez about being a part of everything, how do they reach out to you there at Des Moines United to keep an eye on what's going on as you guys get ready for this season? Hit me with the promo. Well, they can follow us on demonunited.com, demonunited.com. There's actually a registration link in there. If you want to be part of our team, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, you can always uh, also um, – send us an email to the moon united fc at gmail.com and uh and yes if you want to be part of a big family if you want to have fun and if you want to learn our our uh, secret recipe i call it the secret recipe hybrid way of being coached and why i call it hybrid because we all of our development of players uh, in both, both in both the indoor aspect and outdoor. You know, indoor it's a, a a faster play, a faster way of playing, a lot more running, uh, and that helps our players when you move to outdoor to be better players. So um, we have a, a a special recipe created by Jr., which is an expert on the indoor and outdoor, and and. If you want to be part of a competitive team, of a, of a, of a winning team, reach out to us to DemoinUnited.com. What he said. Darwin Salas, president and owner of Des Moines United FC and the head coach, J.R. Fernandez. Looking forward to seeing how the, uh, the sauce is made and the recipe is uh, created for success indoors with uh, futsal and indoors with uh, the MA and now outdoors with the NP and the UP. NPSL, Des Moines United FC is a part of it coming up this season. Guys, thanks for hanging out for a 2v1. We'll be keeping an eye on you. We'll catch up very soon. Thank you. Thank so you. Much.